breathing funnel is uh, working properly. So I'm going to test that, make sure that is the, the stop cock is in the horizontal position, which is closed position. The grease, the glass stopper must be greased properly. And I'm going to mix this with 20 milliliters of water, which are already measured and it is cold water. I'm going to put some of the water in first to make sure there is no, uh, no leak and this is actually uh, working. Transfer the um, product into the, into the separate funnel. Our product, cyclohexene, of course, is organic compound and it's non-polar. It doesn't dissolve in water, so it just forms the second layer and uh, transfer the rest of the water, total of 20 milliliter of water. Place the glass stopper and store it and release the pressure. If there is any pressure. So we are basically um, washing the product from any water soluble, any water soluble impurities and remove the stop cook always, the glass stopper in order for the two layer uh, to form clearly. Sometimes you kind of have to swirl like this to get the two layers. Drain off the bottom layer, which is the aqueous layer. We use only the aqueous layer to wash the product and remove any water soluble impurity. So I'm going to, you know, making sure that no organic layer goes into the, into the Erlenmeyer flask. I will stop right there. Sometimes you're not sure if this is the aqueous layer or the top one is the aqueous layer uh, because organic compounds could have high density as well. Um, if I add a few milliliters of water, to what I have in the flask and only one phase forms, that means what I had in the flask was aqueous layer. This is just a test. I added some water because water is miscible with the aqueous layer, it formed only one layer. And if it was organic layer, it would show me that a second layer has, has formed. Next the step of the reaction following the procedure, is adding sodium bicarbonate. The purpose of adding sodium bicarbonate is to remove any traces of acid from our product. So I have 10% sodium bicarbonate, measure 10 milliliters and transfer the sodium bicarbonate. That's also considered a washing solution. But sodium bicarbonate with the, uh, with the leftover acid or, or with traces of the acid, it can generate a carbon dioxide. So you have to make sure that you are renting the, or releasing the pressure from the separatory funnel often. Now place it back in, on the ring or supported by the ring stand, remove glass stopper for the two layers to form or separate. Remove the bottom layer. We already found that the bottom layer is the lower layer is the aqueous layer and combine with the first wash that we had. Okay, wash with the sodium bicarbonate. We have a second wash with, uh, Deionized water, I have cold deionized water in set up already in the ice. Because the boiling point of the product is low, I try to use all my solvent at low temperature. So I'm not losing any of the product. At the same time, since I'm working outside of the fuel hood, I don't vaporize any of these and I don't get in my head. So 
I use cold solvent. This time, washing with water is basically removing, again, sodium bicarbonate or any soluble ions that we have in there is the last wash. We wait for the layers to separate and drain off the bottom layer. You notice the height of the separatory funnel with respect to the flask is just touching. So in case if it moves around, it doesn't spill out of the glass. It gives me warning. And one bad habit students have, they keep the glass stopper on, it creates vacuum and it doesn't drain. They cannot remove the layer and they're wondering why that happens. You don't want to create vacuum inside. Okay. So the last drop. Now, on the next step, going to um, transfer to a um, 50 ml Erlenmeyer flask. And this transfer, I can just pour from the, from the top. For the top layer, we pour it from the top. And I have to explain why, because when you drain off the aqueous layer, this area of the separatory funnel is wet and it has some drops of water. We don't want the drops of water from this area after the stopper to be combined with the organic layer. That's why we are pouring from the top. This sample is our organic layer. It might seem uh, cloudy. The reason it's cloudy is because it has some moisture in there. To remove the moisture, like just like other experiments that we had for extractions and all that, we are going to add anhydrous agent. The anhydrous agent I'm using here is calcium chloride, and I will bring the calcium chloride to add to the flat. Um, anhydrous calcium chloride, we are using for drying the, the sample, and they always ask me how much should I add? And I just say, add enough. How much is enough? Enough is when you add the um, drying agent or anhydrous agent, it doesn't clump up. When it clumps up, that means that you, you still have some more uh, water molecules or some traces of the you know, uh, water or moisture still. So you add just a few more um, pellets of or mesh of the calcium chloride and anhydrous calcium chloride. The calcium chloride now is moving around. That means I have added enough. Going to cover this as soon as possible because I don't want moisture to get in. And using a parafilm, I will cover the, uh, the flask for the anhydrous agent to do the job, meaning it's going to remove the moisture from the organic, uh, organic layer. Uh, for the dry sample, now I can measure the mass for percent yield and I will do the chemical test for the functional uh, group. Because of the cyclohexanol is not substituted and it gives only one alkene product. We have one product here, uh, but we can check for the uh, CC double bond with the two um, chemical tests. So I'm just going to wait two minutes, two, three minutes for it to dry and uh, measure the mass uh, using a pre-made flask again. Thank you.